Okay, thank you for joining us. In this video, we'll look at polynomial um, division using the remainder theorem and seeing in different ways that it can be applied in a context um, related to the IP. So let's say that we have a function and we have it defined by this where x is a real number. We want to find the remainder when this polynomial p of x is divided by x minus 2 and find the remainder when it's divided by x minus 3. Using the remainder theorem, all we have to do for part a is to say, hey, what is p of 2? And p of 2 is going to be equal to 8 minus 12 plus 16 minus 24. And if we consider that, we have negative 12 minus 24 is negative 36 plus 16 is going to be negative 20 plus another 8 is going to be negative 12. And of course, if you wanted to, you could use a calculator to determine that if you may struggle with arithmetic, which is fine. All right, many of us do. So 8 minus 12 plus 16 minus 24. All right, and we see that we have negative 12 for that value. But once again, this is a non-calculator question, so we'd be expected to do it without a calculator, but we can always check our work. Then remainder when divided by 3, p of 3, 3 cubed is 27, then we have minus 27, then plus 24, minus 24, and so that's equal to 0. So that means that x minus 3 we know for sure is a factor, all right? So how can we use that, right? Because our next uh, command term here is hence. How can we use the fact that x minus three is a factor to show that we have this cubic have only one real zero? Well, one approach to do that is to go ahead and use the um, synthetic division or root Bini's rule. So our root is three, our coefficients are one, negative three, eight, and negative 24. All right, bring down the one, multiply, zero, multiply, add, all right, and then multiply 24, and that's zero. So that means that P of X as a real factorization is X minus three, times x squared plus 8, and we know that x squared plus 8 is equal to 0 if x is equal to plus or minus i square root of 8, all right, because um, we're working with the complex solutions here, and so therefore the only real root is going to be x equals 3. Then if we want to write down the transformation that will transform the graph of y equals p of x onto the graph of y equals, and really this should probably have a line break there, that's bad form, y equals 8x cubed minus 12x squared plus 16x minus 24. Well, we have to think about what composition would might we have on p of x to get to our y. So if y is equal to p of x, then let's think about what we could have. And so we look at this, we have x cubed needs to change to 8x cubed, negative 3x squared needs to change to negative 12x squared, 8x needs to change to 16x, so that probably gives us our quickest check. And we'll say, hey, p of 2x is going to be this y, and 2x would be 2x to the third power minus 2x, oops, uh, minus 3 times 2x squared. All right, and then plus 8 times 2x and minus 24. And so then we know the transformation that will get us from one graph to the other is going to be a horizontal dilation, all right, or you could say a horizontal stretch by a factor of one half. All right, but essentially we're going to be dividing our we're going to be dividing our um, 
all our x values by 2. So the root of our new function would be 1 half. It doesn't ask us, but we do know that information, right? So we know we know that root of y equals p of 2x is x equals 3 times 1 half, which is going to be 1.5. So we're not asked that information, but it's useful to know. So a quick use of the remainder theorem and the factor theorem to determine our work and then uh, a little bit of transformations there as well. Okay. Thank you for your time. Come back for more help as you need.